in this video, we're going to add static routes. Now, static routes can be painful if that's all we're using and it's a complex network because if we have 40 or 50 different you know, subnets and they can't be summarized, we might have a situation where we have to have multiple static routes and static routes are not fun to maintain. However, having a default route is a great idea and temporarily, until we set up a routing protocol in a separate set of videos, we need to have a couple static routes. One here on Firewall 2. And that static route is going to be a default static route. And the syntax for that is four zeros followed by a zero. It could also be four zeros followed by four more zeros. But anyway, that's the default route. And the next hop is going to be this interface address right here, port four. So the default route on firewall two is going to have the next hop of 10.123.0.51. And that will allow this client's traffic, if he wants to go to the internet, to have firewall two forward that to firewall one, who then is going to use its default route to forward it out WAN1, who then sends it to the service provider, who's then responsible for further routing out on the public internet. However, when that return traffic comes in and Firewall1 does the untranslation, tries to send the response back to 10.20, if it looks at this routing table, it's going to say, I don't know how to get there. So I'll use my default route, which is actually pointing that way. So we need to also add a static route here on Firewall1 that says to get to 10.20.0.0 slash .0 .0 24, use the next hop address of Firewall 2's interface 4. So that gateway or next top address would be 10.123.0. And this address here is going to be .52. And without both those in place, we don't have a hope of getting the traffic here from PC2 on the data plane out to the internet and back. So remember wrap, writes, address translation, and permissions. The R there is for routing, and that has to be in place. It has to be working. So with that in mind, Let's configure a default route here on Firewall 2 and also a static route here on Firewall 1 to train how to get to the 10.20 network. So back at Firewall 2, up in the top left, it's showing that I'm on the right firewall. That's great. I want to make sure I'm on the right device. And on Firewall 2, let's go to Dashboard and we'll go to Network. And let's just take a look at what we currently have with the static and dynamic routing widget to verify what our routes currently look like. So currently we have a directly connected network of 10.20 and a directly connected network of 10.123.0. That's off of these two interfaces respectively. And we also have a directly connected network for our management network, but no default route. So what we'll do to create a default route, we'll simply go to network. And then under network, we'll click on static routes right there. So we'll click on static routes, click on create new. And it already has a syntax here for the default route. And we'll use the next hop of firewall one off of its 10.123.0 interface. So the next hop is going to be 10.123.0.51. And then if we hit tab, it automatically knows which interface it's going to use for that because the interface internal four is on that same subnet of 10.123.0. So it auto populated which interface to use and then we'll click on OK. So now we have a new default route. So if we went back to dashboard and we went to network and then we clicked on the routing widget here showing us we have three connected routes and one static route, and that static route is right here. Effectively, it's our default route. So now that we have our default route here on Firewall 2, let's go to Firewall 1 and set up a static route that says how to get to the 1020 network using 10.123.052 as its next hop to get there. All right, so to do that, I need to go to the correct firewall. So this currently is Firewall 2. Let me open up a new tab for Firewall 1. All right, so here we are at Firewall 1. I'll log in as admin, put the lab password here. So regarding the migration request here with 40 converter, I'll click on later. And here we are at firewall one based on the information here in this widget. Also the information here in the top left hand corner. So here from the dashboard, if we click on network, we can take a look at the static and dynamic routing widget here and verify our routes. So we have our own default route, but we have no route that says how to get to the 1020 network. That's the network over on the left hand side of firewall two. So to add a static route to train firewall one, how to reach that 10.20 network, we're going to go under network and then under network, we're going to click on static routes right here. And then with static route selected, we'll go ahead and create new and we're going to specify that we don't need a new default route. We need a route to 10.20.0.0 with a 24 bit mask. And the next hop is going to be R2's interface address on its internal four interface, which is 10.123.0.52. And then we'll hit the tab key. It knows exactly which interface locally on firewall one it's going to use to reach that next top address because port four has the IP address of 10.123.0.51, which is on the same subnet as that next top for the static route. And we'll click on OK. And then to confirm that, we could go back to the dashboard and go into our network. And here in network, we could go to the static and dynamic routing widget. And here it's now showing us that new static route, which is right here. That basically says to get to 10.20, that network, use the next top of 10.123.0.52. And the interface we're going to use to reach that next top 
is port four. So now on the data plane, we have our route set up for user traffic to be forwarded through the network. However, what we're missing at this moment is permissions because unless the firewall says I'm willing to forward the user traffic over the data plane, it won't. So we're gonna fix that in the next video by setting up a very simple firewall policy that says please allow that user's traffic to go through. So I'll see you in the next video as we set up a firewall policy on Firewall 2. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.